Hey YouTube, it's ACU and welcome to the 133rd episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, I want to talk about something rather interesting. So in last week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, I detailed the status of the iOS 6.1.3 jailbreak and which devices can be jailbroken. Essentially, only the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod Touch using a simple red snow workaround. And I also mentioned that Apple had patched a number of exploits utilized by Evasion in 6.1.3. Now, last night, Posix Ninja, former leader of the Chronic Dev team, the creators of Green Poison and Absinthe, tweeted out a couple of things that were rather interesting. First, he said, quote, well, so far, looks like the next jailbreak might be created entirely by me. And then after receiving a number of questions from his followers asking about the Evaders, which is the new team that created the Evasion Untethered Jailbreak Utility, and it consists of Muscle Nerd, Planet Being, Pod 2G, and Pimskex, Posix Ninja sent out another tweet saying, quote, Evaders haven't gone anywhere. I've just discovered all the needed exploits on my own over the past few months. So this is really interesting, and as I detailed in last week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, the Evaders were planning on creating another untethered jailbreak for the next major release of iOS. And I also mentioned that it wasn't likely they'd create another untethered jailbreak for 6.1.3 simply because it's a minor update and it doesn't bring much to the table. They'll most likely wait until iOS 7 to release the next jailbreak. And unfortunately, the same might be true for POSIX Ninja. Based on the release of past jailbreak utilities, developers like to wait for new versions of iOS and new iOS devices to be released before actually pushing out an untethered jailbreak so that they don't waste the number of exploits they've spent either weeks or months working on. And of course, most of the common questions related to jailbreaking, the differences between tethered, untethered, and semi-untethered or semi-tethered jailbreaks, as well as any and all questions related to downgrading and which devices can actually be downgraded from 6.1.3 to 6.1.2 in order to preserve the evasion jailbreak are all answered in the previous episode. So I'll have a link to that down below in the more info if you're at all interested. All right, next up, earlier this week, it was rumored that T-Mobile would start selling the iPhone 5 and they'd announce their plans to to sell the device during their uncarrier event, which also took place earlier this week. And it turns out that's exactly what they did. So the carrier now plans to sell iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, and iPhone 5 models. And in an attempt to differentiate themselves, the carrier will now sell mobile devices with a down payment plus monthly installment payments that range from $2 to $20, depending on the smartphone. So for example, T-Mobile customers who are interested in purchasing the iPhone 5 can do so for $100 down, plus an additional monthly fee of $20 over a 24 month period. Now this new structure brings the total cost of the phone to $580, which is $69 cheaper than buying an unlocked and contract free 16 gigabyte iPhone 5 from Apple for $649. Now, T-Mobile is calling this their new uncontract plan, and while it sounds great in theory, it's technically still a contract. If a customer was to purchase a phone through the carrier's new payment plan and cancel a month later, T-Mobile would undoubtedly require the phone to be either returned or to have the customer pay for the remaining balance of the phone in full. However, T-Mobile's new plan and structure does have one major advantage, and that's actually detailed in the post that I have linked to down below. So if you're interested, maybe you might be considering switching over to T-Mobile, then just be sure to check that out. And interestingly, T-Mobile also revealed that they'll be the only carrier in the United States to support the iPhone iPhone 5's wideband audio technology. Unsurprisingly, they're calling the feature HD Voice. And as I mentioned earlier, T-Mobile will also offer the iPhone 4S for $70 down and $20 per month over a 24 month period, and the iPhone 4 for $15 up front and an additional $15 per month for the same 24 month period. As for plans, the carrier will now charge a base rate of $50, which includes unlimited talk, text, and 3G data. The plan also includes a measly 500 megabytes of 4G data. And then from there, customers will either be able to pay $10 per month per line for an additional two gigabytes of 4G data, or they can pay $20 per month for unlimited 4G data. And customers are also required to pay $30 per month for the first additional line on their plan, and then $10 per month for every line added after the second. Now, T-Mobile also announced that they're rolling out 4G data starting with Baltimore, Houston, Kansas City, Las Vegas, Phoenix, San Jose, and Washington, D.C. And the iPhone 5, a device that has been available since fall of 2012, will be available for pre-order on T-Mobile starting April 5th. 
All right, next up, I'm sure as most of you are well aware, reports pertaining to the much rumored Apple television set have been all but non-existent in the shadow of the excitement and rumors surrounding a possible post PC smartwatch, unofficially dubbed the iWatch. However, in spite of the iWatch's recent domination of the Apple rumor mill, an Apple television set has continued to remain prevalent among a number of industry watchers and analysts. A new report from DigiTimes cites unnamed supply chain sources that claim Apple is in the process of developing an Ultra HD, often referred to as 4K television set, with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And similar to past rumors, the article claims that Apple's internet and content-rich television will feature both voice and motion control, and is allegedly slated for launch either later this year or early next year. Also, another report from DigiTimes suggests that Apple is preparing to reduce shipments for their iPad mini tablet in the second calendar quarter of 2013. Now, the shipment cut, as revealed by industry sources, is said to affect the total number of iPad minis shipped by 20% for next month. April. Now, numerous reports and predictions from accredited analysts and firms suggest that, based on component orders, Apple may be also preparing to release the next generation iPad mini sometime within the third or fourth quarter of 2013. The next iPad mini is rumored to support Apple's Retina display technology with a stunning resolution of 2048 by 1536. Now, this major technological advancement to the iPad mini will cram the same number of pixels into the smaller tablet's display as what the current full-size iPad offers, but with a significantly higher pixel density of 324 pixels per inch. And of course, others like iMore, who maintain a reputable track record when it comes to reporting on Apple devices, predicts that the second generation iPad mini will merely offer a specification bump and not in the display department. And whatever the case may be, for Apple's next generation iPad mini, just be sure to stay tuned to this series, my YouTube channel in general, and best tag info. I'll keep you guys completely covered. And finally, I just wanted to discuss a few videos that you guys might have missed. So a while back, I actually did an unboxing of the 2013 Retina MacBook Pro. So yes, a lot of you were asking me, Apple has already refreshed their Retina MacBook Pro. And in my in-depth unboxing video, I did highlight the difference between the 2012 and the 2013 models. So just be sure to watch that video if you're interested. I know I keep forgetting to mention it in best tech info and rumors. So I decided to this time around. And next, of course, if you have an iPhone 4, I iPhone 3GS or a fourth generation iPod Touch on iOS 6.1.3, you can still jailbreak using Red Snow, like I mentioned earlier. So I'll have a link to that jailbreak tutorial down below in the more info. I'll also link to my untethered iOS 6.1.2 jailbreak tutorial for all iOS based devices running 6.1.2 or lower. And yes, it does include newer devices like the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, and the iPad mini. And last but not least, if you guys are at all interested in earning paid iOS applications from Apple's App Store for free, as well as gift cards and other various prizes, then just be sure to check out my semi-recent video on it. I detail a couple of different really awesome services. All right, and for the question of the day, let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. Would you guys rather have a 7.9 inch iPad mini with a retina display or a full size 9.9 7 inch iPad. And also, don't forget, it's not too late to enter into my $100 Amazon gift card giveaway, which will be concluding after this weekend. And to enter, all you have to do is rate this video up, hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos, and leave a relevant comment in the comment section. Once your comment is posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. All right, and that's it for this episode. To be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.